Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's stream. We have just about five and a half minutes to go until tonight's puzzles unlock. We'll be solving the Day 15 Advent of Code puzzles in C++ as we do each night. Uh, you can always uh, find these live streams. We start, you know, about five or ten minutes to nine uh, Pacific time here on the Twitch stream. Uh, and you can always find the replays of the streams on my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash spoonboy42. Uh, you can always check out the links in the description. And whether you're watching this on Twitch or on YouTube, you can find all the code that we write for these puzzles up at my GitHub repository. That's github.com slash craig dash chasser slash AOC2020 is the repo. I will put that up on screen right now. And you can also check for the link down in the description. So uh, shortly after we solve these puzzles, I will be, uh, as usual, uploading these solutions to GitHub. So, um, like, it, so we have a little under five minutes until tonight's puzzles unlock. Uh, as always, if you have any questions uh, while we're working through the puzzles, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube later, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, so, last night's puzzle, I'm just going to go back over to the code for that here. Uh, this was a pretty fun one, you know, it was involving, you know, some bit twiddling, uh, you know, and... We got to mess around with some fun, at least in my solutions, use some fun um, uh, int x86 intrinsics that happen to do something very convenient for the solution using this pdep function. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with last night's. Um, and so I'm looking forward to see uh, what we get into tonight. Um, we're definitely getting into that stage of Advent of Code where the puzzles are more algorithmically interesting um, and can't necessarily just be solved by brute force. Um, I think a couple of nights ago when we had to uh, use the Chinese remainder theorem, I got stuck for a little bit and had to look that up and, you know, had to remember some of my old... Uh, modular arithmetic skills. So, uh, yeah, we're getting a little more challenged as, uh, as we get into these later puzzles. So, uh, just to get ready for this evening, let's go ahead and make a new directory for tonight's puzzles. And inside that directory, let's make the source file for our minimal C++ program. You've seen me do this many times by now at this point. But that just our minimal skeleton of a C++ program. And then we will make the build file that tells the Basil build system that we're using how to build it. Okay. And let's go ahead and run that, make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. okay, builds and runs just fine. Uh, you know, to save ourselves a little bit of time, almost always we need uh, some of just the utility libraries I wrote here, our check library, which allows us to do a uh, little ins some assertions, and the IO library, which I use just to uh, read the puzzle input from a file. So let's go ahead and just, you know, put those includes and dependencies in there to save ourselves some time because I'm, I, we've used these, I think, for every day so far, so we're probably going to use them again today. And we will go ahead and put the dependencies for them in our build file. Go ahead and make sure everything still builds and runs okay. And we are good to go. So we have about 45 seconds left until tonight's puzzle unlocks. Anticipation is building. So uh, in the storyline of our puzzles, we have 
I think, uh, finally, uh, docked the ferry on this other island after we were diverted by a storm, and we were going to another airport and just, you know, trying to make our way back, you know, ultimately get to our tropical island destination for our vacation. So we will see what challenge we face this evening. Okay. And away we go. Catch the airport shuttle and try to book a new flight. To the storm, all direct flights have been canceled, but it is available to get around the storm. Okay, we're checking back in with the elves and playing a game with them. They begin by taking turns reading from a list of starting numbers. Then each turn consists of getting the most recently spoken number. That was the first time the number has been spoken, the current number player says zero. Otherwise, the number had been spoken before, the current... Otherwise, the number had been spoken before, the current player announces how many turns apart the number is from when it was previously spoken. Okay. So we keep a history here, it sounds like. Okay. Start with 036. Six was first time, so we go to zero. Okay. <laughs> the game ends with the elves get sick of playing or dinner is ready, whichever comes first. Okay. Uh, oh, and our puzzle input is just right there. So this is going to be part one, I, I feel, is going to be pretty simple to do. Um, but then we are probably going to have to think a little bit harder about the math uh, for part two. So um, You know, we might not even need our I.O. routine this time for the first time because the the uh, input is such a short sequence of numbers. But uh, we'll say nth number. We'll pass in a vector uh, of the initial numbers. And int n. So we'll say n minus equals the size of the sequence because what we're going to do is we're going to keep on adding on to this sequence and um, I mean the pure brute force solution is just to search back in the sequence which would uh, be n squared complexity, and if n is 2020, that's going to be totally fine. Uh, part two, we might find that we need to do like some kind of lookup to positions to avoid some of the time complexity, but um, I don't think that uh, it is a problem. So. Okay. I'm just looking, I, I'm just trying to make sure that I understand the rules exactly correctly. So I'm looking over at the rules here. Uh, first time. Okay, so we look at the previous one. Okay. Yeah, no problemo. So we'll just make this a for loop. And it's greater than zero. 
and then uh, so reduce at count down, reduce the n each time. Uh, so we consider the the sequence as having been already played. So then we look at uh, the back part of the sequence. So um, we're going to use standard find to look uh, in the sequence. And we're going to use r begin and r end on that vector. So these are reverse iterators. So they start at the end of the sequence and they go to the, and they go to, um, the front of the sequence because we want to find the previous, we don't want to find the first time that number happened. We want to find uh, the second to last time that it happened. Um, and so we do r begin plus one because r begin is actually going to point to this previous one that we're looking for. Um, I guess we can just do sequence dot back there too. Don't need to necessarily put that in a separate variable. So if this iterator points to sequence dot r end, then that last number in the sequence was the first time that. Uh, that number had ever been said, so it should be zero. So if iter equals sequence dot r end, then we will push back zero onto the end of the sequence. Otherwise, we want to push back the distance between um, the the two most recent times that that number was said in the memory game. So uh, we do that by taking um, the difference of the iterator. So we subtract uh, iterator minus sequence dot r begin. Um, and that will give us the difference between the back and that uh, other occurrence. And then um, we get to the nth number. So at this point, you know, I'm just going to use check to double check that I'm not off by one or something. Sequence dot size at this point should equal n. Or um, you know what? Easier way to do this is just say while sequence dot size is less than n. Yeah. Don't need that check. And then we will return the last element of the sequence. OK. So um, let's uh, try this out with one of the example inputs. So let's say um, So just as one of the sample inputs, we'll use 312 from the website. And then I will put my actual puzzle input in it after I've verified that um, this gives us a correct answer for that test input. So we'll say nth number, pass that sequence, and n is 2020. We didn't even need the IO library. Imagine that. Uh, get rid of IO, uh, and we will just run this. That gives us 1836, which is correct according to the website. Now I'm going to put my actual puzzle input in here. Sure. Oh, Calculate that solution. And the answer that it gives us is 203. Let's see if we are correct. All right. High per personal best ranking for this year too, 357. We did, and that was with me talking, so I feel pretty good with it. Okay, so now we need to determine the three. Uh, oh my gosh, the 30 millionth number in the sequence. That's pretty big. Um. Th 
30 million. Okay. So first thing, first things first, let's copy our, uh, our part one solution. It's part two. Now, uh, what I will say is that with 30 million, uh, this n squared solution where we always just search backwards uh, in the string, uh, that's not going to cut it this time uh, because 30 million, I think, is uh, just too much. I mean, like, I could attempt this. I could put in 30 million, and you're just going to see that... Uh, the program just chugs for a while. Uh, so, um, and if we, I, I need to make a, a new build target for this, but although this, you know, would give us a correct answer eventually, I kind of want to finish this puzzle before the heat death of the universe. Yeah, see, this is going, it's going, it's going. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, kill that program and stop it because we need a better solution. So the the immediate thing that I can think of is to trade time for space. And I, I bet that we can um, do something here where we keep a dictionary of the position of the um, the last time that each number was seen and even if we get up to 30 million entries in that, and we store each one as an int, which is four bytes, that's still going to be like 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, and, you know, like overhead for the hash table. So let's, you know, call it like 200 megabytes of memory, which is significant, but, you know, it's 2020, baby. We got plenty of RAM. Uh, and that will be, uh, that should be linear time, I think. Uh, so order of n instead of order of n squared. Uh, so that is what I'm going to try and do. Um, so we'll say int counter equals sequence dot size to start with. Well, here. It's not even really going to be that big because we're going to see repeated numbers a lot. But th but this flat hash map that we're putting in here is going to be a dictionary from um, the number to its last occurrence. And then for... each thing in the starting sequence we will put uh, an element into that uh, dictionary. So Now, um, we will say we have a count, so for int counter equals um, number to position dot size, counter less than n, plus plus counter, uh, we are going to um, keep on working. So, uh, And then we'll have we'll have this this variable back that is the most recent number that uh, that we saw. So sequence dot back. And I'm wondering now if we should um, because if there's two instances of back of that back number. 
Well, there aren't going to be any in our... Um, I'm going to do this minus one just because each iteration of this, you know, we have to compute a new back, but we want to see the uh, the previous value of it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Again, I worry a little bit about an off by one here, but we can, you know, uh, try it with the test input and um, hopefully it runs in a decent amount of time and we can uh, avoid that kind of trouble. Or at least, you know, see when we've gotten into it and get ourselves out of it. So what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to look up in this number to position map that back value. So if uh, it hasn't existed before, then um, the next back, meaning the next back should be uh, zero. We're going to put zero onto the end of the sequence effectively. So um, we'll say So int next back equals zero, and actually if that's not, and so that's going to be zero if it is at the end. If it's not at the end, then next back equals uh, the current counter position minus um, the previous position of that same number. Uh, and so then we will put into the number to position map um, yeah that I think is 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 put into the number position map um, at Again, I, I think I have this. I'm just like like worried about off by ones. Um, say so yeah, put in the previous position. We'll say equals back, and then back equals next back. And then return back. Okay. Am I sure that this is exactly correct? No. Uh, but we will, let's go ahead and put in one of the test inputs, see how long it takes to run and see what it gives us. Okay. Oh, and obviously we have to include that dependency for uh, Absol flat hash map. Still kind of taking its sweet time to do 30 million iterations of the loop. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I just want to see, um, say, if counter... Uh, Remainder when we divide by, say, 1,024 is 0. We'll just uh, print out that counter. So I want to see how fast this is actually going. We may have to try and get even faster. Okay. This is not terrible. We're going to hit 30 million before too long here. Um, it's going to use a significant amount of memory, to be sure, like we talked about, on the order of hundreds of megabytes, maybe. But, um, it's not terrible. It's taken, like, less than a minute to get there. 
Oh my gosh, we're so agonizingly close. Why did you stop? Okay, <laughs> and it returns zero, which is not correct. Uh, okay. This is... Okay. Well, you know what? The initial program was just a variant of the same thing. Let's do it with 2020. Uh, we can get rid of our little progress counter here, but we can just uh, verify that our new version of the algorithm is correct. Um, so we've got our 0, 3, 6 to start with, and it should get up to 436. So let's see. I mean, is it always giving 0? OK. So. That's the problem. We were reversing those, the order that those should have been. OK, 26 is still not correct, though. Um, I swear I will stop randomly tinkering with this in just a minute if this doesn't work. OK, that gets it back to 0. OK. Um, Let's just take it up to 10 and see what it gives us for each iteration. So um, debug our little algorithm here. So we go 0, 3, 6, 0, 3. Three, and then it should be one, not two. So it oh, it should instead of being counter minus one, it should be the um. Should it? Again, I'm just tweaking these around and seeing. So we go six, zero, three, three, one, zero, four, zero. Okay. I think we just went one too many. Um, Is really it? Turn ten would be zero. Okay, let's try twenty twenty. Off by one errors, they get the best of us. That gives four thirty six, which is correct for that short input. Um now let's try our actual puzzle input again with 2020 and see if it still gives us the same correct answer for the first part. Two oh three. Okay. Now let's run this thing 30 million times again. And it will take us a minute. Now the thing is, even though this is linear up to 30 million, you know, there's, I have a feeling there, there's got to be a, uh, a bet, an algorithmically better solution than the one that we're trying here. Man, that actually went way faster than I expected. Uh, you want to try it out? See if we got it? Let's give it a go. All right, uh, not the worst. Okay, so we got that there. Um, so I'd say this solution is, you know, somewhere in between 
uh, brute force and, um, you know, a really elegant algorithm. Uh, so looking at the leaderboards, you know, first part, personal best for this year, 357. That was not bad at all. And second part, 1299. Pretty good. Um, so I would say here is obviously this map that we're building up um, takes up a significant uh, amount of memory. Although I wonder how much memory it actually does take up. Why don't we find that out? I mean, you know, we don't have anywhere to be. Let's uh, go ahead and say... We'll do the actual bucket count, which I believe will give us the... Um, Bucket cat. Hmm. Well, let's do the size and the bucket count. So size will give us the actual number of elements logically contained. But I am interested in knowing the bucket count as well, because that may uh, give us an indication of, you know, better indication of the actual memory usage. Yeah. Run that again and see what it tells us. Takes a few seconds, but less time than I maybe would have thought. Okay. So map size is about 3.6 million elements. Buck count, yeah, okay, that's about what I expected. So, so we have about 4.1 million elements. Each of those elements is a pair of two four-byte integers, so eight-byte integers for those. So we're looking at about a thir about 32 megabytes of memory that we used for this solution. Um, I definitely think that there is a more elegant solution that doesn't use up so much memory and doesn't use up quite so much time. I mean, the time that we used isn't crazy. It's, you know, like... That felt like about 20 seconds. Uh, but that is something that I will ponder a little bit more because I, th I, I think that there is, you know, there's something we can do mathematically here um, with this sequence that is going to make it a lot faster. But that being said, just uh, playing that simple time-space trade-off where, uh, because... I mean, because this map is hash ba based on average, all of the insertions are going to be constant time and all of the lookups are going to be constant time. So we just iterate through that whole sequence, which is 30 million, that's big. But you know, all that we have to do in each iteration of this loop is all constant time operations. So we get to uh, where we wanna be ultimately. Um, But uh, I might, uh, you know, try and sketch out the math, the math for this and sketch out, you know, some, some algebraic equations and uh, see if there is really a much, it, that there is a more elegant, faster solution for this particular problem. And then maybe I will, uh, if I do come up with something, I'll talk about that a little bit on tomorrow night's stream. So uh, as always, you know, tomorrow night's stream, I, I hope to see you again there. We will be um, solving the day 16 puzzles. Uh, these streams always start at about five to 10 minutes before nine o'clock uh, Pacific time. Uh, if you missed the live streams on Twitch, you can always watch the replays on my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash spoonboy42. And uh, no matter where you watch, you can always find the code for these solutions up in my GitHub repository. That's github.com slash craig chasser slash AOC 2020. Uh, thank you everyone for watching tonight. Uh, we had fun. We had, you know, fun with this puzzle. Uh, solved it pretty quickly, which I'm happy about. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Bye bye.